welcome to my channel. I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Fortinet stock and analyzing its ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Fortinet develops and markets cybersecurity products and services such as firewalls and antivirus, intrusion prevention, and endpoint security. The company started in 2000 and IPO'd in 2009, raising $156 million. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $18.9 billion. So they're a large cap company. And let's see what they're trading at, $116.86. And the way you value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull the actual free cash flow and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plan and equipment. Now I'm going to pull their net income which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And then we're going to pull their revenue which are the sales for each year. And we also want to look at the numbers. So free cash flow looks really good. It's positive and growing each year. The net income is a bit low in 2016 and 17. I think this type of company is probably investing a lot of money in R&D. So that's probably why it was low in those two years. But it picks up a lot in 2018 and 19. And their revenue is growing each year, which is great. The margins are improving a lot from 3% to 15%. Margins are net income over revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. And they're doing a better job at managing expenses. Let's look at a capital structure. This company has no debt. And let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a low beta, 0.84, so the stock is less volatile than the market. Let's see their dividend yield to see the percentage of dividends they pay. And they don't pay dividends. So we'll put an NA here. And now let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. And that's $2.8 billion. Let's take a look at what current assets are. $2 billion of cash, which is the best asset. $544 million of net receivables. That's how much other companies owe this company. And $117 million of inventory. Let's get their current liabilities. That's $1.5 billion. Let's see what that is. 96 million of accounts payable, that's how much this company owes other companies. 4.1 million of taxes payable, that's how much they owe the government taxes. 199 million of accrued liabilities, these are expenses the company has incurred but it hasn't paid yet. For example, payroll and payroll taxes are a common type of accrued liability. Deferred revenue, 1.2 billion. This is when you receive cash in advance of delivering a product or service. But when you actually send the product out, then you pull it off of deferred revenue and onto the income statement as revenue. Stockholders equity is 1.3 billion. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. Let's see what that is. 200,000 of common stock, 140 million of retained earnings. Retained earnings is all your prior net incomes minus your prior dividends paid. So they're operating at a profit historically. 1.1 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's get their EBIT, that's on the income statement, earnings before interest and taxes, 344 million. Let's look at a capital structure, they're 100% equity, cost of equity is 8.8%, and we figure that out using the capital asset pricing model, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 31 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company $27 billion. We divide that by 162 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 168. They're trading at 117, so they're trading at a 30% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. This is the closest I've ever been to Simply Wall Street, only 10 cents off. It's pretty amazing. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it looks like the price has been driven up and it's at a pretty high point, but it still seems like the stock is undervalued. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a bad PE of 58. The median in the entire market is 15. Price of sales is not so good either. 
The median in the market is 1.8, the average is 5.4. Bad price to book at 14, the median is 2.5, the average is 5.7. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 58, so investors are paying $58 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 8.8. .8. So investors are paying $8.80 for $1 of sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 14.3. So investors are paying $14.30 for $1 of book value. Good current ratio 1.9, the median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Good ROE of 25%, the median is 13%, the average is 8%. And current ratio is current assets over current liabilities so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 25%, so they provide a good value to their equity holders. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Adobe, Blackberry, Dyer Durham, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto, Square, VMware, and Wix all in the same industry as Fortinet. If Fortinet has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better than the average in every single category except market cap. Earlier, I was comparing their ratios to the entire market, but you should always compare it to companies in the same industry. And this is a better comparison. Even though they don't have a good PE, the average in the industry is negative, and their price of sales is better than the average, and their price to book is better because the average is negative. They're the only company in the industry to have no debt. And when you take on debt, you can improve your price to earnings and price to sales ratios. But in terms of market cap, they are smaller than the average. They're not a small company at 19 billion market cap, but when you compare it to the average company, they are small because there's such big companies in their industry like Microsoft, Oracle, Adobe. There's only two companies in the industry that pay a dividend, Microsoft and Oracle. And Oracle has the biggest dividend payment at 1.74%. The rest don't pay a dividend. Fortinet is not paying a dividend, so they're keeping the money and growing the business, which should grow the stock price, which should help you if you're an investor. To summarize things, my model and Simply Wall Street both say the stock is trading at a 30% discount. The ratios are better than most in the industry, and they have no debt. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I answer all comments. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.